Hello, my name is Bray Wyatt. I am the eater of worlds, and if you're not listening to Bootleg Kev, then I advise you run. <laughs> yeah, one the base party station. Bootleg Kev, I'm very excited. This is uh actually actively because CM Punk's my favorite wrestler of all time, but no. currently on the active res wrestling roster, my favorite wrestler right now. We got Bray Wyatt in the building. <laughs> I'm happy to be here, man. Bray, man, forward to this. you are like an extremely uh, this run. You and, and and the Wyatt family has been quite kind of quite epic, man. Like. Congratulations on, on the last year. It's been about a year since it's you've really been, been... It's been a year. I think the anniversary was last week while I was in Japan. One year of just terror. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you guys kind of took over where... I, I, I want to say kind of like where the shield left off. Like, oh. the, the shield... I'm, as far as, like, causing a lot of terror. <laughs> causing a lot of terror. Um, what... I mean, first of all, let's talk about these promos that you cut, man. Like, you are... These crazy prophetic just promos that you have, have have mastered man how long did it take you to to uh to master this like character of bray wyatt i know you guys were in nxt for a while but yeah that's that's what uh, people ask me that a lot and it's uh it's it's a really easy question to answer because uh my ideals and my views on society and the world and everything around me and what i disagree with of that we do as a culture the things right. that we do as a culture it's all real so when I go out there, I'm not, I don't sit back here like some guys do and write a bunch of stuff on paper right. and memorize it. Uh, there's no one that hands me a script and says, read this, because if they did, I'd throw it right out the window. It's all, it all just comes from me. You know, it flows out. Uh, I go, uh, when I go and do these, uh, these, these uh, interviews and these promos, uh, I go with the intention of I have an idea of what I want to say, what a message I want to deliver, and while I'm out there, it just it just drains out of me, man. It just it just flows out of me, and it's it's a, it's 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 real. There's no there's nothing there's no lies and no nothing I made up. I just I'm just giving you myself, and that's, that's what they are, man. That's great, man. <laughs> yeah. And now you know um, Harper and Rowan are kind of coming into their own as a tag yeah. team. So you guys kind of got a nice little trio yeah. going on, man. Um, can you talk about uh, your days as Husky Harris when you were coming up in Nexus? You know, my, my yeah. kid spoiled it, and he was like, yo, Bray Wyatt was in WWE 12. And, you know, a lot of a lot of wrestling fans out there know, you know, like Ryback was someone who, who mm -hmm. came, who was part of Nexus and mm -hmm. came back as Ryback. Um, how, how did that kind of, like, help you cut your teeth? Being under CM Punk and coming up through through uh, Nexus. Yeah, when I look when I look back at that era, and I see this character Husky Harris, I just see a sad little boy. Right. You know, it was it was someone that was uh, that was forced to be something that he didn't want to be, and uh, how he was handled. It was it was just a terrible terrible time, a dark period in in my life, his life. It wasn't who I am it's not who I am today and when I look when I look back at it it's just a, I'm just disappointed in Husky Harris right because uh, it wasn't real man it was a figment of someone else's imagination that they tried to push on a person I feel like it happens a lot of times yeah like, like a lot of times in wrestling like guys catch it like their second gimmick around like the first time right. sometimes it's not you know like you said yeah the best the best I don't want to use the word gimmick but you know that's a wrestling word that the ones that work are the ones that really identify with the actual person. Yeah, that's what so it you're is. being yourself, like and you that's said. That's it, man. No one could tell you how to be you. No one could ever tell me how to be me. But they did. They tried. They tried real hard. And and it wasn't until I was thrust thrust into that and I tasted uh, failure that it kind of opened something in me. And when I went back uh, to Florida, when I came back to Florida, I was angry. And frustrated and I started becoming something else you know I, I don't know I don't attribute it to growing up or right. something like that I just I was so 
bitter and and motivated at the same time. It's like like when you hear of like a like a rap artist, you know, he takes um, everything that uh, has has uh, gone against him in his life yeah. and everything to put his back up. Music, yeah. yeah, yeah, everything to put his back up against the wall, and and his his outlet becomes his music. And my outlet became uh, wrestling. And it became talking. And when I go out there with a microphone, I get to tell you about who I am. I get to tell you about what I think's wrong with the world. And that's and that's the reality of it, man. I never was Husky Harris. It wasn't me. Right. It was not a real person. Right. Yeah, Bray Wyatt is is who I am. And it's it's what I want to portray. It's what I want to be remembered for. And that's who I am, man. That's great. Um, let's talk about Sister Abigail. I feel uh, like we are in like an era where so many finishers are getting recycled just because man i mean let's be honest wrestling's been around for however many years and i mean it's hard to just pull stuff out of your ass you know like new you know i mean even like a guy like roman reigns his thing's the spear i mean how many people have had the spear you know what i mean Mm -hmm. sister abigail was a very original move the kiss on the forehead and just the move itself yeah uh how did you come up with that yourself or was that something that you had help with or well no 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 one helps me no oh, else. okay. <laughs> it's such a great, great I, finisher. How'd you come up with it? I think, I think the, the problem is that sometimes people let people help them out too much. And like I was saying here, man, you gotta, you gotta be yourself. Right. And the move, I'm sure the move has actually been done, you know, as it's, uh, it's, it's just a maneuver. But what I put behind it was a feeling. The theatrics. That, you know, the yeah. beat, the beat, if you will. Yeah. So it's like. Uh, when I pull them out and I, like when I dance with them in the in the kiss, when I look them in the eye and I say goodbye, you know, um, I'm provoking a feeling in you, a feeling in them. You know, I'm trying to get an emotional response, and that's what it does, and that's why, in my opinion, it's so special. You know, no one done it, nothing like I've done it. You know. No, I agree. 100%. <laughs> uh, what is it like being a heel? That I mean, I always know, there's heels that people genuinely just don't like. Yeah. Like. Like the three man band, I don't know. I mean, of course, it's a one man band now, but uh, they're like the, the the bad guys. But people, from, uh, three people, ninjas. people can't stand them. Like they, but but you like guys like yourself, guys like Cesaro, like you guys are loved, man. Like I feel like yeah. you, there's more positivity towards you guys than than they get. Even like I mean, you know, people probably boo more for John Cena than right, they right. do for the Wyatt family. Right. I mean, I mean, how do you do you want people to boo like? Because, I mean, I, at the end of the day, you know, that's kind of your job as a bad guy. But, you know, at the same time, you're doing such a great job and, and cutting cutting across to the fans so easy. It's so hard for people to not yeah. like the, the white family. <laughs> well, the, the way I look at it is, like, when you when you put me and John Cena up uh, face-to-face, uh, you would uh, automatically, if you just saw us, you would go, John's a good guy. Right. And Bray's a bad guy. But in my opinion, uh, every good person does bad things and every bad person does good things and what I'm doing is I'm eliciting uh, a response from people I care about I believe in people that's 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 the real me I believe in people and as long as they're out there and they're making noise and they're excited when I come out because when 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 I hear them react you and you know yeah, you know okay. when you hear someone reacting for you it, it opens uh, another door inside your subconscious you know it makes you want to give back to them okay you came from me I'm gonna show you what I can give you and uh, and that's what it is. If they were all sitting on their hands and not making noise, I think then I wouldn't be doing my job. But boo, cheer, noise. Right. You know? <laughs> um, I want to talk to you about one of the most memorable moments in Raw that I can really remember in the last, for a long time. This is when Daniel Bryan joined the, the Wyatt family. Yeah. You guys got into the cage. And then, you know, he had his moment where he took the, the thing off and, you know, he betrayed Bray Wyatt. And, and it was like... One of those moments where I was watching on TV and I had like goosebumps. I was like, wow, the way the crowd was. I got goosebumps when you just said it. Yeah, the way the crowd, I had never seen the crowd like that. It was it was remarkable. Yeah. What was it like being a part of that and telling that story in the ring? Because, you know, storytelling in, in a ring is, you know, to me, probably the most important thing that a, yeah. that a wrestler can be good at. Yeah, and uh, like I said, I got goosebumps just thinking about it because you know, most people don't know this, but it was in Providence, Rhode Island, and Providence is a notoriously quiet crowd. And on that night, they weren't quiet. They were riotous, yes. you know? <laughs> and and uh, being, being in there and, and feeling that moment, every moment I had with Daniel Bryan, 
uh, we had some real experiences together. Possibly my greatest match was at the Royal Rumble against him. It was a great match. Yeah, and me, me and Daniel Bryan are far from over, you know. Uh, when he comes back, and I know he will, uh, we will probably uh, go to war hundreds more times, you know. And that, that uh, I see him as one of my, him and Roman Reigns, and even John Cena, I see them as my greatest foes going forward. Right. Uh, 20 years from now, they'll go, wow, this moment happened with Daniel Bryan and Bray Wyatt or Roman Reigns and John, you know. And that's that's what I'm that's what I'm looking forward to. I need those guys. Yeah, man, you gotta have those those like you know those those Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels moments. Yeah, we see, always look back and you we get it. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Who's the guy that like? Who's your favorite guy to wrestle? That you guys just get each other in the ring and and it, you know it's fluid. Like who's if you had to pick one guy to to, to have a match with to you know maybe uh, headline a pay per view? Who would be that guy that you know you'd have just an amazing match with? Me and Dean Ambrose. Oh, that's great, man. When that's I was in stuff. Florida. And you guys are both kind of yeah, crazy? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, me and Dean Ambrose, uh, I wouldn't say they're the smoothest. Probably my smoothest opponent is Daniel Bryan. But me and Dean Ambrose, when we were in Florida, we used to do this. Uh, this Florida Championship Wrestling? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. This was here in Tampa. Yeah, so. yeah. This was, you know, young. I actually saw something on uh, some, somebody sent me some picture one time. And it was like, do I have I met? It was a picture said, have I met you before? And it was all our early days from all the other promotions, right. us and the Shield, when we were all younger, faced off. And there was a picture of me and Ambrose doing the bull rope match, and we used to do that everywhere. You know, we've we, I don't know how many times we fought, but it's always something. Me and him have the uh, that special chemistry where we can bring out something that no one's ever seen, because like you said, we're both a little. Crazy. Yeah, I think that's like <laughs> yeah. that's a few that's bound to happen. Oh, soon. there's no doubt in my now mind. That, you know, now that the Shield is yeah. doing their solo thing, yeah. man, you can throw out good guys and bad guys yeah. in that one. Hundred percent. Two, two, two uh, uh, wild men.